Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about cryptomats. If you don't know what cryptomats are, you can either just watch the video and figure it out, or you can uh, stop it and go Google it right now. I don't want to get into all that because I want to make this as short as possible, and there's a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and jump in. View layer properties, and then under passes, we need to enable whatever passes we want. And obviously we're talking about cryptomat, so we're going to look at the cryptomat passes. But uh, this instance ID is going to be important. And mat node, this one, I think, is what these are the important ones, I believe. Um, if not, I'll come back and, and we'll, we'll fix that out. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff you could, you could, uh, you could do. And, and I highly recommend you go through and, and find out which passes are going to be important for what you're doing. Um, I'm going to enable just a few here, just so that you can see sort of what some of these passes look like if you're not uh, familiar with passes at all. So yeah, I've, I've enabled a few, a few of these, but on the CryptoMat side, instance ID and mat node, I think those are the important ones. And now what that's going to do, if we go into the compositing tab, we click on use nodes and you can see those passes now in our render layers. So you can see we have, um, yeah, alpha, oct beauty, environment, shared, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and render. So I'll push F12, render this amazing, amazingly beautiful scene here. So incredible. Okay, the render has finished. Now let's go back over into our compositor. And if you do, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can click Shift Control Left Click. And what that's going to do is make a viewer, and it's going to connect it to there. And if you click on this multiple times, so Shift Control Left Click, it's going to cycle through all the different passes we have. So if we go through our instance ID, our crypto instance ID. You can see it looks very strange, and that's okay. Uh, we're going to fix that here in a second. But um, yeah, so for now, we can just do image. And then to set this up, I'm actually going to break this so we can see. You can see this a little better. I'm going to go full screen. And what we're going to do is you're going to do Shift A, search for Cryptomat, and enable that. And then what you're going to do is set image goes to image, and then uh, crypto instance ID, we're going to put into here, and we're going to leave that by itself for now. And then now what we can do is control shift click, and it's going to show us, so it's going to show us nothing in the image, it'll show us nothing in the mat right now, because what we have to do is pick. So if we go to pick, you can see, and, and again, in this viewer, you can push V to zoom out and Alt V to zoom in. So V zooms in, Alt V zooms out. So now what we can do is these are all individual objects. So if I click on this monkey and now we do shift click control, all we, this mat, we get only this monkey, right? So we could do shift control mat and we can see what the mat looks like, okay? And we can go back to pick and we can say, you know what? I want this monkey and this monkey and I want this monkey and yeah, let's look at that. So then you get just these monkeys. And again, you could say, oh, I want to remove that one. And it, it's removed. So you could see how this is uh, pretty amazing already, I'm sure. You can see uh, how quickly you can do things. And then um, you can duplicate this. So let's go ahead and Shift D to duplicate. Move all this up. And you could do the same thing. So image, crypto, you can click on here and push delete to remove. And then shift control click. I'm going to say add this one. And then we see the mat, we see the image for this. So if you wanted to, for instance, if we click on here, So now we can see we can have one image that looks like this and one image that looks like this. And you you may know about this, but you may not. If you do Shift A and then search for File Output, you can you can have this output straight to a file. 
And you could also, you could do this, you could duplicate this and you can do the same thing here and you could have them go to the same place or you can change the name if you go over to item properties so you can have the base path you could put uh, different things in here you could also add inputs so you could have different inputs that go into this file path so you could actually save this out like this now you could also I mean there's there's a million different ways you could do this uh, you can also just go into the compositor and then from here save save as and then save you know your files that way as well uh, it kinda just depends on your workflow depends on how many you know how crazy you're gonna get with these crypto mats um, but let me show you another one so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one now I will duplicate this so in this one I'm gonna do image to image in fact let me just go up here um, and then I'm going to do mat node to the first one. I'm going to clear this. And now if we do pick, you can see that uh, we have, there's basically three different materials. And it's, it's hard because they all look a very similar color. But if I click on this monkey, you can see that just these two monkeys have this uh, red material. And if I looked here, you could see like, okay, these are the only two that share that red material. Um, so you could select things by just their material, which should become really interesting as well. So let's go back to pick. We'll remove that. We'll click on this one. And we can see only the green material was selected. And it has nothing to do with the color. It's just these three objects share the exact same material. Uh, and then we can do the same thing. We could try this one and then just get the things that have share this one material. So, um, I'm sure you, you can already see like how, how helpful this might be uh, to use cryptomats in even just directly in Blender. Because the other thing you can do is, let's say you only wanted to affect these three things. Well, you could composite them all back into each other so that you could, for instance, let's say raise the brightness of these monkeys, but keep the rest of the image looking the same. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that real quick, if I can remember. <laughs> um, all right, so let's say we just want to affect the brightness. So let's go to search and then mix at a mix node. And then what we're gonna do here is the mat is gonna go into the factor. Image, the original image is gonna go in the top one here. And then the image from here is gonna go in the bottom. And if we did it right, it shouldn't look any different yet because everything is the same. But if we go, now what we can do is we can take this image that's coming out of the material and put this brightness node on it. And let's try this out. Uh, you see it? So now this is only affecting those three monkeys. So obviously, you know, this might not be the, the most amazing uh, use case <laughs> for this, but you could. Uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff you could do here. We could do um, color balance, for instance. Do something crazy like that, and then we have this new composition where only these three were affected. Uh, now there are a million things you could do with the render layers and, and, and like I was saying you could um, if we go look at uh, the ambient light this is just the ambient light uh, which this scene is basically all ambient light um, the ambient occlusion you can see the ambient occlusion here and and you can mix all these things together and do some really creative stuff uh, but we're not going to get into all that all right make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time